do the best I can for myself to protect my property, my health, and my sanity. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, 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 there you are. <laughs> this is quick. Um, I just wanted to thank the new council. I'm really liking the questions and um, looking into things. And I'm pretty impressed with the new council, so yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mayor and Council comments. Can I respond to Nancy's? Um, I was involved in last year's Caden Cast as far as setting up, well, not setting up, cleaning up. If I'm not mistaken, that thing ended a few minutes before 8. Now, the cleanup, of course, goes a little bit past, but the actual event, we're, they were very punctual as far as ending that event. Uh, as far as the HVAC system, um, Louis has, has the I haven't checked the dampeners. I did look at the box, but the dampener to the unit has been put in. Yes, I was told that they were put in. Okay, we'll take a look at that, but there's really not, to me, there's really not much more we can do about that. So. Okay, any other comments? Mm -hmm. Councilor Park? Um, with your permission, we had a meeting of the Amtrak committee today. And I bring to you a suggestion from our committee. Um, since this is going to be an ongoing thing, and since it's kind of more of a community service type of thing, it's our suggestion that we turn the council position over to Councillor Coy as the head of the community service committee. And I would step down in that position, but ultimately, since you are the mayor, it is your decision to do that. So I still am going to go to attend the meetings because I'm very interested in being part of that. But with your permission, I would like to hand off the council position to Councillor Coy, the head of the Community Service Committee. Um, I have no problem with that at all, as long as you two don't have any problem with it. No, you you might be aware, though, that Councilor Cody's not going to be around for how long? Well, we have set the meetings yeah, we, because of the schedule. Oh, okay. So you're going to do that. And I am still going to turn the meetings. So you can be a backup. Yes. Anyway. yes. All right. Why don't we do it that way? Then? Yeah, she'll be the primary and she can be backup. And then there, we've talked to a couple people today also about joining in as community representatives sure. on that as well. Mm -hmm. but not just for that event, but for right. that particular item, but other things as well. All right. So we just wanted to make written, sure so that was okay with you. All right, good. Any other comments from the councilor? All right. The, <coughs> excuse me, addition corrections or adjustments to the agenda are uh, going? <coughs> yes, Your Honor, uh, 6.5. Um, I think this is going to be primarily discussion on uh, the CPA proposal. All right, 5.0, consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I second. Is moved and seconded? Approve the consent agenda. Call for the vote. Mayor Shorty. Aye. Councillor Basler. Councillor Fortune. Aye. Councillor Clark. Aye. Councillor Biggerstaff. Oh, we have a. Yes, yes. Councillor Slavin. Aye. Carries. All right, moving on to Administrative Services 6.0. Before we get into administrative services, uh, we have some folks here from the chamber, and they're down under old business. And with the council's concurrence, I'd like to move that up to the beginning of the, of the agenda so that uh, they can, so Dave, anyway, Dave, one can get out of here and go home. Thank you, sir. <laughs> My pleasure. So, 
that was a discussion item for tonight? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, basically, what I brought uh, to the council this evening in regards to the uh, transient room tax discussion was a couple of examples of how other cities uh, disperse uh, the funds uh, to the chamber. And what you have in your packet is a city of Albany policy. And then you also have a, an exhibit from a contract that the city of Newport does uh, with their chamber. And so those are what I was getting primarily from the council as a whole was uh, trying to find uh, a way to disperse the money and to account for it through collaboration uh, with the chamber. So now, before we go. So that's, that's why I, I introduced these documents so that those people who work in the meeting could uh, see these documents and take a look at I might add that a meeting was held with uh, members of the chamber and uh, myself and the city administrator and, and, and Jim, uh, Councilor Coy and uh, in this in this chamber here a couple of weeks ago to discuss uh, issues that were brought up at the meet <coughs> meeting by some of the members in the, in the audience. But from that, it kind of tipped off a few things, and we had a pretty good discussion. There is a uh, concern in the community on the way that the money is t the TRT money is being uh, used. So we didn't we wanted to get a handle on that to see how if there was any validity to that or not. That's what prompted us to go out to the other cities to see how they're doing it. Um, there's been a large amount of confusion as to what TRT is and RTMP is. And they've been intermixed and changed and they're not the same thing at all. And the money that was going to the chamber was called RTMP, but it wasn't RTMP, it was TRT. It should have been. So as a result of that, what we're looking at now is a different process. Hopefully we can work with the chamber on that. Uh, we're looking at the uh, um, possible way the money is distributed. The chamber at this time is actually doing research on their own to find out, uh, to give us a report on from um, Who's that from, Randy? Lane County, Travel Oregon, and some other sources. Yeah. So Lane County, Travel Oregon, and some other sources to kind of give us a background on what, what the money has been used for in the past and to um, uh, kind of start the direction going. And actually, if it's all right with the council, <coughs> unless somebody has something to say at this time, I'd like to kind of let the, the people from the chamber fill us in on the blanks and stuff, if that's okay. All right. Nobody had anything to say? What's the links do you have? Huh? What blanks would you like us to talk about? <laughs> Any blanks you think are there. Okay, so the reason it's delayed on getting the information is room tax funds was until last year handled by um, Lane County Park. They've since transferred to Lane County Economic Development. They've transferred folders, but they haven't transferred a lot of electronic files. So half the information is in one place, half of it's in another place. I went down there yesterday, went through some of the archives, I couldn't find everything I needed. Apparently, all the important electronic files are still over at Lane County Parks. So, Sarah and Gwenda, that are running it now at Lane County Economic Development, <coughs> all they have basically is the old grants for years that are in a big old folder about this big for each year, and you just look at every grant. They don't have in the end how much was awarded, while well, apply. At the end of that process, the people that apply, there's a printout, and it says this. All these people applied, here's who was funded, here who wasn't, here's who's partial funded, and all that stuff. And they don't have that there. And that's what we really need to help with our report so you would know that what I'm doing in the chamber is doing as part of my job is writing a lot of grants for the community 
not just the chamber. We've written at least two grants that were for the whole community. Every year you can do special grant projects, and long story short is everybody from the Bach Festival to Country Fair to events like mine can apply. And this is a third set of money, not to confuse you, but this is part of what we do. It's, it's a special grants project, and that's the third set of money. So anyway, we've done that for many years, but for two of the years recently, we decided not to apply for anything for the chamber. So we wrote a grant on behalf of the community for projects and events in the community. We wrote a big grant for everything from the local bike events, not mine, other ones, like Fat 55, <coughs> the Words Waldo Race, the concerts in the park, Zero Clearance Theater, and some other local activities. So we did that for a couple years. We also um, went and wrote a grant so we go to Sportsman Show for a couple years. We'll get a booth down there because there's a lot of people that come here to hunt and fish. So we wrote a grant for that. And then, you know, the other ones have been the Visitor's Guide and then going back to 2002, the MAP Project, which has been around for years. And we did five versions of that before we got funding to do the um, Visitor's Guide, which is is a Visitor's Guide for the Oak Ridge Westboro area. The content of it talks about the area, it has maps of the area and stuff. It does list our chamber members, that is true, but the content is about the area itself. So, um, basically my job is to go out and try and get those grants, to network a lot, I'm on a lot of boards, you'll see the whole list of them when you get my final report. And that's what I do, and I deal with local businesses too. But back in the day, I couldn't tell you what year because it's has been going on so long, long before I was chamber director, going back to <coughs> the 80s, I believe. The city's had the chamber focus on tourism, and so that's part of my job, is to focus on tourism, and that's why I'm at a lot of the meetings all around the state and the county, and I'm the representative from Oak Ridge <laughs> on that. With that said, I also take the visitor's guides to numerous places out of my own pocket. If I'm gonna be going to do the bike shops for my own business. I take along the visitor's guide. I don't change, charge the chamber. There's visitor's guides all over bike shops, all over Oregon, in Seattle, and Vancouver, BC. And I just take those along when I'm going, you know, because I know we don't have a huge budget. I mean, we have by far the smallest chamber budget of the rural chambers in Lane County. Um, so, and I, I work, I work about nine months a year on average, paid, but I work all year. I usually get laid off three months a year and usually go ahead and work those extra months because somebody has to stick around and still work. You can't just shut the chamber down for three months. So that's what I do. If you have any other questions, like I said, the report will be much more detailed and I apologize. I really wish they had got their information to each other because it's like one sheet I'm waiting for. That's it. One sheet that has all the information I need on it that will help settle with. We've written a lot of grants and I just don't want to put the wrong information because I, I want to make sure I, and some years we were funded, some years we weren't, you know, and some years it was partial funding. So I want to make sure I have the accurate figures in there for you. Councilor? Okay. When you say we were funded, do you mean the chamber was funded? The chamber or the community, pro the grants were funded. I well, see, <coughs> in, in, in Bolivia, I, I, I don't know you from Adam, you know, but, but I understand that, that you do a lot of great things for the community. And, and I, that's fantastic. I, I, I wish you will. I, and if, if writing grants is what you do, then maybe we should hire to write grants for us. Because I, I see a lot of grants that we need to write, to tell you the truth. But I think there's other people in the community that does it for free. That's just part of my role as chamber director. That's part of what I do. Well, that's fine, but I mean, why does why does the city pay you so? That's what I don't get. It is. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, if you want to work, I mean, if they're working for the city, that's one thing. Or if we have a, if we have some kind of a an agreement with them where they're going to do this for the city and, and we're going to pay them to do this, and that's that's will be. I mean, then, then we should do that. What well, I'm paid out of room tax from Lane County. But see, what you want to talk to which has has to be are basically not really saying that, that they don't feel they should be paying you either. I'm going to you know, say the, the, one, so one lodging owner feels that way, yes. No, I, I can I can name you two right now, plus a few of the businesses downtown. So, and, and like I said, I, I, I have no, nothing against you, sir. I, I, I don't, I, I don't even know why I'm in this 
argument to you other than the fact that I just don't really think you start. I think if you want to work for the city, you should work for the city. But if, but if, if, if you are going to work for the city, then the chamber should pay you however the chamber pays you. And I think they should encourage more businesses to join the chamber so that more business will pay into the chamber and they will pay your salary. But as long as the city keeps paying your salary, the, the chamber has no business, has no reason to try to improve, increase the number of people or the number of businesses that are in town to, to join it and thereby represent more of the city. The majority, not all of the businesses that people would deal with are members. There's a business license list, yes, which has 100 plus businesses on it. But a lot of those, as me and Jerry talked about, are people that are not going to be chamber members. They're people that do contract work with the city or there's small, small businesses that won't join or there's home-based businesses that won't join no matter what town you're in. But the majority of businesses that deal with the general public or deal with tours coming through town or whatever are members. Not all of them, but the majority are. And you can only get so many businesses in Oak Ridge, and, and you know, we've had this, we've had a steady membership for years, and as I said, the majority are members. So now that's where we disagree. You can only get so many businesses in Oak Ridge. Well, I think that I think I think the chamber's job is to encourage businesses to come to Oak Ridge, not to encourage tourism as much as to encourage businesses. I, I, think, I think we should have a tourist. I think we should have people. I, mean, I think having that little booth down there for tourism is great, but I think. I think the chamber's job should be, and my dad was on Chamber of Commerce in our hometown, I think their job should be to represent and encourage businesses. <coughs> well, I, that's part of my job too. Is I, I help John Melanin and whoever with projects, if they want me to write something up or go somewhere with them to talk about bringing business. See, that, that's, that's the way I see it. Is this should be a, this should be a, I do that too. for services. You know, if you write the grand floors or something, we should pay them. I agree. I should agree you should get paid for what you do. I just don't know the pain. Well, in my humble opinion, I don't know that paying the Chamber of Commerce is is the way the city should go about it. Well, I'd like to clarify some stuff here. There's 75 members you could have on the right. so seven and of that 75, I understand some of them dropped off because of the recently dropped off, so the list isn't complete. Yeah, that went out of business. Um, yeah. Our the city doesn't care what the chamber does. I mean, that's, that's kind of a broad stroke thing. The city does care because it, infect, it affects the city. But the chamber's their own organization. The city has no control over what the chamber does. They can't tell them how to do the <coughs> program or anything. What we do is we can say how the transit room tax is used. And it can be used for numbers of things. Uh, one of which is uh, another community, anything in the community. That's where we're trying to get a handle on right now is is to sit down with the chamber and find out what their goals are and and find out how much of that room tax we would give to meet those goals and still do the things that, uh, remember that is a tax, it comes back to the city, it's the city's money. The RTMP on the other hand, which is I believe what you're, you were using currently to fund the projects that people apply for uh, which is usually around ten thousand dollars a year or something like that, which will be coming up pretty soon. Um, ten to twelve thousand. It 12, could 000. be higher this year because Olympic trials generated a lot more. <coughs> and what's happened in the past is the chamber, somewhere back there, <coughs> was saddled with determining how those funds would be be dispersed for those projects. And in our meeting, it came out that the, the chamber would rather not do that. It puts it, it, it and in fact, it does put a, a, a bullseye on their back because people come in and then they start yelling at the chamber members because they maybe didn't get their project funded. So what I have proposed is that uh, in part of uh, the agreements that we will be working on, and by the way, that is being uh, done by the Community Services Committee, which is uh, headed by Councilor Cohen. Uh, hopefully in the near future we can sit down and have something fleshed out so everybody can sit down and talk about the same thing. Uh, that's kind of the direction we're going right, going right now and uh, we don't know how much of that money is going to go for what projects because we don't know what the projects are yet. So that's kind of where we're at. The city does not pay, well indirectly the city pays Randy's, Randy's um, salary but the city doesn't, the room tax does. And the city doesn't have, it is a, it is a, 
It's been mis mislabeled in our city budget as RTMP when it should have been TRT. <coughs> so the city has been just as confused as everybody else. Me along, I've been on the council for four years now, and um, and frankly, I was uh, still not understanding it even up to the last month. Been doing a lot of research since then, uh, and all of us have. So I think once everybody has a better understanding about both of them, they're not two funds, they're one fund used for different purposes. And uh, does that kind of say what you were saying? Yeah, that kind of, I mean, yeah. basically, you know, the RT and M, they're both earned tax funds, you're correct. Mm -hmm. They just have different different pots and you can do certain things with RTMP that you can't do with TRT. It's, it's kind of, they each have their own rules. Um, like I said, RTMP will probably have 10 to 12, maybe a little more this year. Talking to, sorry, I almost said chief. So you said manager over there. Um, it was, uh, I think it's gonna be close to 19,000 in the TRT this year, 18 to 19,000. So if the chamber was was currently funded at 10,000, we just were encouraged to ask for more this year because as I said, it's not based on the community itself, it's a formula. Lowell gets money, Burnridge gets money. If neither one of them have motels or bed, they don't have anything that generates lodging. The county just divvies it up. So this year there'd be a little bit more, so that's why we were asked to ask for a little bit more this year. So we could do some projects. But as I said, if, if you decided to fund us at the same level, which it's been for a long time, that would still leave you between eight and nine thousand dollars to do other projects plus the ten to fourteen, whatever it's gonna be. For the RTMP funds, and the chamber does also pay for some stuff. We pay anywhere between seven hundred fifty and a thousand dollars a year to have the visitors' guides at every visitor center in the state, the main visitor centers on all around the state, plus up at the airport in uh, at the Portland Airport. And so there, we do spend money on some of that stuff. So some of the money we get, it's not all going towards salary; it goes towards uh, websites and also stuff like that. So do we think? Just to, if I may, real quick, I think we're all familiar with grants in general, but I think it's important to understand, uh, and I guess to Councilor Biggerstaff's kind of comment, is that if we apply for and receive a grant for tourism, those funds need be earmarked and used for tourism activities, whatever that list encompasses. However, if we apply, at, or we apply for an economic development grant, and then those funds are earmarked and, and required to be used for economic development. Now, frankly, those of us sitting in the room could say either one works, but the guidelines are such that it's pretty, pretty black and white where they should and should not be used or can and cannot be. So, just to be clear, and not it just you know, so if we apply for tourism, it really does need to go for tourism and visitor stays versus economic development, vice versa. Just to, you're talking about grants outside the road tax. Yeah, grant grant funding in general. They're very specific, and they're kind of a sticky wicket, frankly, and they just have to be used for the right purposes. 